Hi guys, Dorota Palicka International, new artist and educator here and I'm in with Jean today and this is unusual guys, look at those beauties like natural nails, uh, absolutely amazing, so strong and so beautiful. It is really rare to get those type of nails, uh, so I'm really excited to do them. We are just going to start sanitizing her hands and mine, just wrap in and uh, we will do some beautiful um, cat eye design on them. So first of all, I'm just pushing back the cuticles, so nice and firm. So push those cuticles. And then we are going to dehydrate the nail plate and the reason for it on the nail plate there might be some oils or other stuff and we really don't want that to be massaged into the nail i have put the gloves because i've got a wee cat we are putting the floorings and skirting it house um, but yeah so this is a drop of the blue scrap and now we're able to do a bit of the cuticle work and shape those nails so I'm using the spike bead and the e-file is going on 12. I can actually show you guys as well. So I'm using, there we are. Uh, so that's the speed of the file as well. And I find it very comfy to work, um, uh, to work this way on the cuticles. So I'm doing one side first. Okay, and I'm removing any cuticle which might be on the nail plate. So I'm not touching the nail folds yet. So just to remove the cuticles from the nail plate. Then the same on the other hand. And then put back into the reverse so we can do the other side. Don't force it, like I'm going with in and out motion. And they're really nicely lifting up as well, so they will be much easier to trim it. And you've got two options. Um, one, you could use the beads to remove the cuticles. It is pretty time consuming, so I usually prefer to use the nippers. Like the true combination manicure that can take even up to an hour. But what else you can do it is when you've got your e-file on the reverse, you can actually push them back and clean the folds. Like uh, the lady doesn't have two, but uh, nail folds in there. So you can just trim some of the cuticles with the bead. And now I can start preparing the nail plate. So we are going to use on the natural nails 180 grit. And then the buffer as well. So the buffer I'm using is um, 100 and 180 grit. And so does the file I'm going to use is 100, 180 grit. And now we can shape them. Okay, so that's 180 by 180. What shape would you like them? Mm. Squabble. They kind of grow this way. Yes. Let's yeah. Leave it that way. Yeah. That way, fine. Unfortunately, I need to take some of them down. 
just so they're all nice and even. So I'm shaping on the sides, shaping the free edge, and then take off the corners. You don't want the corners to be really sharp, so I'm doing one motion, one side, other side, okay? Then with the file, I'm also giving couple scratches around the cuticle area. So couple scratches there, like this. On this new, we need to be very gentle with the shaping because we want to keep as much length as possible. Take those corners off. Scratch around the cuticle area. One side, other side. Nice and straight first. Then take the corners off. And if you will file, file this way, you will always get a nice squabble shape rather than trying to be all over the place. So I'm filing one side, other side. There is also a split, and if I would leave the split, the a split might pull the gel polish, so you really don't want to leave it. So nice and straight, take off the corner, scratch, and get rid of the split. It's actually a weak cut. There we are, next one. They're so strong, guys, nails, like, really excited. As I say, I don't get often, like, clients with such as beautiful natural nails. Couple scratches. And the other hand. <laughs> So nice and straight, take off the corners. We need to also take into the consideration that when we, uh, when we cover the nails with the colors, you want to kind of look all the same size. So check the other hand as well. And the corners. And you can file the nails both ways. Like this is a myth that you cannot file the nails uh, both ways and you have to file them one way. It's more related to this uh, movement because the nails go like a fish scale but like this way doesn't really matter as long as the free edge is nice and smooth it's not going to split are they for some special occasion no just just so you can just to cheer me up. <laughs> oh yes we all need that isn't it yeah And what's happened to you? the nice weather we had yesterday? It was like, worse, guys, this is the worst summer ever we're having, like. <laughs> so, other side. Also, look what I'm doing. I'm pulling the nail folds down with my fingers, so I'm not risking cutting the client. If you go like this, those edges might be sharp. I also always remove them. Like, and you have to really make sure they are removed properly so they are not uh, hurting the client. Then you can go really in. Uh, but then at the same time, you don't want to file too high because the nail is attached in, the, in there, in those places. Uh, so you do, do not want to, just relax it, perfect. Uh, no, that's it. Uh, you don't want to damage those attachments. Great, my next step is to wrap them. So I'm using those um, 100, by 180 grit and you can really nicely get the, around those cuticles here 
I'm also not scared to go pretty fast just because we didn't touch those delicate cuticle area yet. But I'm cleaning everything properly. Push them back. Make sure there is no dust or any bits and pieces underneath of the nails because that's another thing. If the, those kind of um, bits and pieces will be left in there, that could cause the lifting of the product. And on those nails, I'm expecting the gel polish, like I never say it to my clients because I rather them to be nicely surprised. Um, but on those type of nails, if the lady doesn't break a nail, I'm expecting it to last even six weeks, no problem. You've got pretty similar nails. Okay, mine aren't as nice, but you've got pretty similar shape to my nails as well. And for gel polish, you really want to only remove the shine. You don't want to overfile those uh, nails. They don't need like as much of the uh, rough surface of the, as the extensions. So. It is really important to do it, it nice and gently. And then for the base, we've got two options and I will explain two options for you as well. Perfect, remove the dust and tidy up those cuticles and then we can apply the gel polish and we will do also a beautiful design as well. So I'm using a two millimeter nipper and guys, I'm trying to get those nippers in stock and I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying. They're really amazing, like they're so precise. Um, that I hope I will be able to get them in stock. So I'm just trimming the cuticles. Do not overdo it, like you really don't want to overdo it, especially that when the nails are dry, it looks like there is more. Uh, and then once we apply the cuticle oil, once the dust is uh, removed and we hydrate the nail again, they become nice and beautiful. So I'm always, always removing less than more. Like I don't want to cause the scarring tissue and overgrowth of the cuticles. And sometimes you can see like, especially the clients which do the cuticles themselves, they come in and there is a um, red area, like really red and inflamed. And that's when they overdoing the cuticles and they just grow more and more. So you really don't want to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm actually filling if the place is loose. If it's place, I'm closing the cuticle nipper. Fill if it's loose and then closing. If I don't feel it loose, I'm not cutting it because that means I'm on the live living tissue and then the disasters are happening. <laughs> But this part is always pretty satisfying. So you can kind of help yourself as well, like by lifting them up and then you can easily identify which parts you can safely remove. And another thing is like we have done all the filing, so I have no risk of going into the file over those places. Uh, that's why I can file also quicker as well. And yes, in the schools, and they teach me this way as well, in schools they tell you cuticles first and then the filing, but I always do it opposite. Like you have guys seen me on all the videos and every single one, like I, has, I got even sometimes comments like, Oh, you don't remove the cuticles. I do after all the filing is done, just before the color application. 
Okay, another thing what you can do it just before the color application, there is a wee knife on the uh, other side of the cuticle pusher. You can also go and check for any more places. Just so your polish goes really nice and well. Okay, remove the dust, dehydrate with the blue scrub. So really nice and squeaky clean. You can also make sure like you're doing it corners and the free edge, like so underneath as well, because we are capping the free edge. And if you do not clean that, uh, again, this is going to affect the lasting time. Okay, so nice, clean. Extra nail prep. Yeah, all about the nail prep. So extra nail prep. Base gel. Again, something different. So what I'm doing is I'm applying a drop of the base, just whatever. Okay, drop of the base. And again, in school they teach us don't touch the cuticles and apply the base with the brush. I do not do it this way. I apply it those small drop, then take a sponge and I brush it in to the nail. This is the thinnest ever layer of the base gel. I have seen lots of nails like uh, where the gel polish uh, is lifting from the nails, the water gets trapped in there uh, because we start doing like a thicker base and if the base is too thick, it's not cured properly and it doesn't attach well to the nail plate, okay? So that's my nails prep inside the lamp. When the layer is so thin, the base cures even in 10 seconds, um, but because it's so thin, it does really cure properly and you've got the base gel like the tiniest amount at the edges and around the cuticle area so first of all when the nails are going to grow out uh, you wouldn't be able to see those kind of big jumps and this is absolutely plenty for a base gel for those type of nice nails if i would soak off so we can soak off the product like by opening the top coat and then remove it with the um, uh, with the soak of remover like so I've got some soak of remover like and I would um, Soak them off in those Foils, okay, so if that's the technique I want to use it for the removal of those nails I would go straight with the color now But if I want to use the e-file I need a thicker layer of the base just so I'm not going to file through the natural nail and That's what we are going to do it. So change So I'm playing I'm applying another layer of the base gel, removing the excess, like really strongly removing the excess and then apply it nice and thin layer, like really thin layer, cap those free edge. And I'm using those kind of shaky motion just to really leave it like as little product as possible. There is hardly any product on my on my brush. You don't want your base to be too thick. It's a different story if we're working to give a strength to the nail. Uh, then you could apply some products which are provided like designed for it. So that would be example uh, build that nail or fiber in a bottle gel which looks really nice, but those nails don't need any extra strength. They've got really nice c -curve, which gives them a strength and they're really nice and strong. Change. Uh, this hand, yep, yeah, perfect. <laughs> and relax it, perfect. So I'm pushing it in. I'm actually excited, I cannot wait for the design part. <laughs> Looks great. And 
I do it always the thumb at the end, like so different people will do it slightly different, I believe. I just like to leave my thumb at the end. Now another tips guys, so change. Another tips. When we've got the base gel, the base gel has lots of inhibition layers, so you've got two options. One option is take a dry brush, remove the um, excess of the inhibition layer, or use the sponge, which you had it, to wipe off a little bit of those excess. Just so your gel polish is not going to slide. Just before the painting as well, I am going to push back the cuticle even more, just because they come back. They always come back, so push the cuticle and then using 183, finally back in stock guys, uh, black, I'm going to paint those nails. So remove the excess of the product. Look really nice and close. Up the free edge and I love this black is so highly pigmented I also like to do it maybe two, three nails at the time and then give them a cure just so the gel polish stays in place, I have leave it. Perfect, change. So exactly the same on this hand. I remove this inhibition layer and now we can paint it. You quite often you say you were you liking black nails. I think black looks always so nice, isn't it? It does. It used to be when I first started, it was only Nirvana that did black. Uh -huh. It was a mosher kind of shop. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I now, didn't live now, in now the UK. Has black. <laughs> yeah, I didn't live in the. Yeah, oh like yeah, I know. Okay, yeah. change. I know what you mean. Gosh, I'm so bad. Now you see it more in the shop. So it's, 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 see, I think it's more fashion now, and yeah. it's treated like mm -hmm. as an elegant. Like I love black nails as well. Like yeah. I love black clothes, and it, yeah. I think it looks really nice and classy, and and it lasts the longest. I think as yes. well. Yes. And you can wear anything with it. Totally. <laughs> Totally. See, I'm more careful with the black, like in the summer months, but in the mm -hmm. winter, like I always have to have my nails black at least once. Mm And another tip, guys, when you're working with the black, 
you have to really walk it through it you don't want to put too much of the product uh, it has to be really nice and thin layer the black is such a highly pigmented color sort of like reds and whites uh, that if you apply it too thick it will to really wrinkle in a lamp so i'm really taking my time to leave it only a tiny tight no that's it a tiny bit of the product on the nail and then the other two sorry guys i've got the camera just right on front of my nose getting in a i will need the back massage afterwards like <laughs> Now the aftercare, I will give you also a wee aftercare tip. So the nails are nice and strong, but if you get in contact with the water, so say example, if you would take a long shower or a bath or you will do some house cleaning you, and, the and the water gets into the nails, uh, they are a bit softer and it takes about half an hour for them to kind of get their strength back in. So for those first half an hour after you had your bath or after you have done some cleaning with out of gloves watch for the nails because that's they are most prone for any breakage or bending um, and uh, and this is affecting the lasting time so i'm always waiting about half an hour before i do any tasks cuticle oil is also good as well because like when the nails getting dry they shrink and then when they catch the water they expand uh, so applying cuticle oils keep those nice balance in your nails. Okay, so we've got nice black background. Change the hands. And now we can start doing the design part. So I'm going to use the cut eye number 04. And it's a really beautiful color. You could use it on its own, but we are going to do those cut eye effect in there. Okay, so I'm pushing one side other side just so I get a really nice effect that's it I'm really happy with it now that's so pretty are you liking it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'm glad you do. Look, guys, uh, the position of the magnet, I kind of twisting it a little bit. Like this. There we are. Change your hands. And I'm going to do it maybe two nails at the time and then cure it and then we can move on into a beautiful design. You could actually paint it even on its own. I think it looks so pretty. Like make sure the fingers are separated uh, so when you do the second nail, you do not damage the first one you have created.
Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome change. So another two nails. And under the light, I also check. Oh, under the light, I also check how the how is it. Pro oh, come on, what is there? Got a piece of dust in here. That's it. Under the light, I check how the cat eye is reflecting. Perfect change. It's amazing how that works, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> like everyone is always like so impressed when the design is showing up. I said just a small particles of the metal in there which move. With the magnets to create the design. Absolutely awesome. Actually the stuff which we which people invite those days is unbelievable. But it was first the nail, po nail polishes, uh, which was the cut eye. The gel polish came in much later. Now I have broken this design, so I need to bring it back. There we are. To fix it. There we are. And now push it. Perfect. <laughs> So if you break the design, just, just find the control over the product. That's it. Change. And then we've got just fans to do and we can move on into the design part. Perfect change. Change. Hi Shine No Wipe Top Gel. So I'm just applying the top coat all over. Look at this. Oh my goodness. So pretty. Applying the top coat all over them. Make sure you do cap your free edge. And we need to remember that the fan was done later than the rest of the nail, so I'm not going to put the top coat yet on the fan nail. Change. I'm doing two nails in here now. Maybe three actually I do. Because I need one for the design. 
so top coat top coat change and then we have to put the product over the thumbnail so i'm just applying the top coat in there change and then on the other two nails once they cure we are going to buff the ring finger nail where we will create a beautiful design perfect change Okay, the nail is buffed and I even start picking up the one stroke because we had the phone call and I pressed the wrong button. So I have squeezed out the paint and the paint, acrylic paints I'm using is a nail perfect uh, white and then magenta as well. And we have scratched the surface of the, nut, uh, of the top coat as well. I like to paint it on the buffed top coat. We are going to use the the master brush so that's the brush you can get it guys from my website as well. Like I love it, it's so tiny and it makes a perfect flowers. And then picking up the color. So on the higher part of my brush, I'm picking the lighter color and the darker color on the lower part and then mix them well. Okay. So mix the paint well. And now we are starting painting the flowers. I have to actually say it because in the previous, vi uh, previous part of the video, uh, we... I didn't dry out the brush. Uh, on the previous part of the video, the lady just mentioned that the last time she had her nails done was five years ago. So yeah, they need to be really nice. I have put, um, I didn't dry out the brush after the water. So I'm just picking up the paint again. You cannot have too much water in there. And then we are going to paint those flowers. So I'm more massaging my paint than, than shaking the hand. It is such a small surface that if you do shake your hand too much, you have no control over what you're doing. Uh, so it is really important you do kind of more massage it. And then we lifts. Wait for the part which we have painted first to dry a little bit and then we can start painting the inside of the flower. Wait for it to dry again so I've got time to paint something on the other finger. I pick up a little bit of water, dry my brush out, and a paint. And one stroke looks so amazing with the cut eyes, like I think that's so pretty designs and then the leaf so touch 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 shake it with your brush but only kind of in a massaging motion do not go like this Paint the middle and now this part is dry so white touch white, pink touch pink. Okay, this way we have created the opening. I'm squeezing smaller petals now. Very straight brush. 
and we have created another petals. I take the other hand and we are going to paint exactly the same on the other one. So pick up my paint. Do not rush and do not do too many layers of uh, those kind of roses uh, because then they're losing the shape and you don't know what is going on in there. So white touch white. Bring it down one side and then the other side. Okay, take a D liner brush, so a fine liner brush, <coughs> and we are going to do a couple outlines and then that's our design finish. I'm getting it uh, clean because I have used it in the gel. Ideally, you want to have so UV cleanser. Ideally, you want to have two separate brushes for your acrylic uh, and the gel because now it takes some time for me to the product to no, it takes some time for the brush to get used to the new product. And what I'm doing is I'm I'm really kind of working the paint through it, remove it just so my brush has paint rather than the gel on it. Okay, and then only on the end of the brush I've got a tiny amount of the product to do the little outline. You have to work with very watery brush. Like lots of water in there. And do not outline all the design because it looks fake. So just some places. Okay, I take the other hand. Very delicate lines. You can also see that I'm changing the shape of the petals by prolonging them and a wee tiny touch Okay, add some detail. I take the other hand. So very delicate white bits and pieces. Relax it a little bit. Perfect, thank you. And then we can top coat it. So once we put the top coat, everything looks much nicer when it comes to the one stroke. So we've got two of them. And now I'm just going to apply the top coat. And then that's those beautiful nails are finished. So look how amazing one stroke looks over the cat eye. Absolutely stunning. 
so so pretty and sad and then the top coat on this one and then we are just going to take a nice and beautiful thumbnail picture uh, I hope guys you have really enjoyed this tutorial tutorial and you have learned something uh, new on those uh, natural nails so I show you one more time how pretty it is change your hands and then this hand is uh, finished so I'm sending you glittery hacks and bye for now mm -hmm.